Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the all new 2014 BMW M235i. And this is gonna be a detailed, in-depth review of the M235. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip and go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior, as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to extend a big thanks and shout out to Flow BMW, located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, for allowing me to come out and film the all-new 2014 BMW M235i Coupe. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. Now the M235 does come standard with BMW's Comfort Access Smart Key System. So, by just taking the key fob and placing it in your pocket, as well as utilizing the touch sensors on both the door handles, you're able to lock and unlock the vehicle. To lock, just tap the little red portion on top of the handle. Then after waiting a second, just grab the handle. There's also a touch sensor located behind, and that automatically unlocks the vehicle. The exterior color is known as mineral gray metallic, featuring the black Dakota leather interior. And along with that smart key system, the 2 Series also features remote push button ignition. All you have to do to start is just put your foot on the brake, locate the button in the dash, and hit it to go. The M235 features a sportier variant of the electric assist rack and pinion setup of the standard 2 series. With the addition of BMW's Servotronic or Variable Effort Steering System, the higher the speed, the quicker the vehicle responds to the steering input. Therefore, with the ratio as low as 10 to 1, the wheel will need to be turned less to achieve a greater response, enhancing agility with abrupt maneuvers and sharp turn ends. At lower speeds, it's the opposite. The ratio increases up to 14.5 increasing the amount you need to turn the wheel for the desired response, providing a relaxed motion for easier low-speed driving and parking. It's all read through an M-specific three-spoke thick bolstered leather wrap steering wheel finished in satin silver trim and M-badging below. As far as the gearbox, for both the 228 and M235, the standard transmission is BMW's electronically controlled 8-speed automatic. You can also opt for a 6-speed manual as a no-cost option. With the automatic, in addition to standard launch control, you are also able to shift it manually, either via the gear selector below, or by the paddles mounted behind the steering wheel. Launch control is activated by pressing the DSC or Dynamic Stability Control button, placing the selector into sport mode, and hitting the brakes. Once the brakes are held, perform the accelerator kick down, and then it will hold the revs until you release the brakes for the fastest takeoff times. Also standard is an auto start stop feature for improved economy. When activated, the vehicle will momentarily shut the engine off when you come to a complete stop. When you're ready to take off, the car automatically reignites and is ready to go, helping conserve a little bit of extra fuel. 
One of the most significant advantages of the M235 is its standard adaptive suspension, paired with the driving experience controller in the center console. In addition to relaxing and firming up the dampers based on the driver's inputs and desires, it also alters many other features from throttle mapping, shift times and behavior, and steering effort. The suspension itself can also be lowered by 10mm for a more planted feel. The different modes consist of Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. They directly relate to how they sound, altering the systems correspondingly. Eco Pro, paired with the Trick Reward system for bonus mileage, alters the engine management software to modify output. In addition to transmission characteristics such as shifting to higher gear sooner and remaining in the higher gears longer. All combined, it works to improve economy by up to 20%. Comfort is your day-to-day -day driving mode, while Sport and Sport Plus work to increase response from the throttle, increase steering effort, and alter transmission characteristics, in addition to decreasing shift times. Sport Plus gains a special dynamic traction control mode over the Sport mode's dynamic stability control, allowing you to explore the vehicle's handling limits even further. And so we're going to flip on the automatic headlamps, as well as the hazards. Both the windows are fully automatic as standard. And we're going to check out the exterior, shall we? The interior will also chime a few times, letting you notice lost detection of the proximity key fob. In light of BMW's recent changes with how they named their vehicles, for future models, the two doors will be indicated by an even number, while four doors will be indicated by an odd number. The all-new 2 Series for 2014 replaces the entry-level 1 Series Coupe that first came out for 2008. The 2 Series is designed to take the spirit and potential the 1 Series had and take it up a notch, pitting the limited-run 1 Series N Coupe in the crosshairs with the N235i. It's also the first BMW in recent years that can be somewhat compared with the iconic E36 and E46 M3s, considering its size and dimensions. Available as both the 228i turbo 4-cylinder and the M235i turbo 6-cylinder, the M235 represents the first vehicle available in the United States from BMW's M Performance division. Now, M Performance cars, like Audi's S-Line, are designed to bridge the gap between the standard cars and the all-out track-ready M division vehicles. Everything from engine management, braking, suspension, steering, and gearboxes have higher performing components, but are not quite true M cars. It doesn't receive some structural components like a carbon fiber roof. It's likely though to see an M2 sometime in the next year, but for now the M235 is the sportiest, highest performing 2 Series you can currently buy. In general, the 2 Series is a larger car than the one it replaces. Length increases by 2.8 inches, while both width and wheelbase grow by 1.3 inches. Front and rear track widths have also increased by 1.6 and 1.7 inches respectively. Height is marginally shorter by just 0.2 inches. This directly translates to an increase in interior space and comfort for occupants not only in the front but in the rear as well, not to mention more cargo space out in the back with nearly a foot of extra cargo space. Even though the 2 Series may be slightly bigger than the 1, thanks to the implementation of more height strength steel, weight gain is a mere 27 pounds over the 1 Series M Coupe. While the 1 Series could be a bit awkward in its styling, the 2 Series adopts a lot of inspiration from BMW's new 4 Series, the two-door version of the new 3 Series lineup, including its engine compartment and crash structures up front. The 2 Series' tight packaging, side scallops, and accent creases give it a lean, chiseled look, keeping the small proportions of the 1 Series relatively in check and making it one of the best-looking BMW coupes to come out in recent years. Just as on the full-blown M cars, the M235 significantly differs in styling between the 228, not only with the standard Shadowline exterior trim, but it also features an aggressive front clip that replaces the fog lamps in the standard car in favor for larger air intakes. Now the side sills also feature more definition. The rear clip now incorporates twin polished sport exhausts on either side, rather than locating them together on one side. Performance numbers, which we'll cover in a bit, are also very close to the 1 Series M Coupe. Along with the standard adaptive suspension in the M235, it also has brake-based torque vectoring to deliver torque to the rear wheels with the most traction. A mechanical limited slip differential is also available. In addition to some optional tech and convenience packages we'll talk about soon, you can also opt for a driver assistance package that adds parking sensors and a backup camera. 
A package on top of that also adds the latest safety tech including lane departure warning, forward collision warning, and pedestrian detection. Standard on the M235 is an upgraded set of lightweight aluminum alloy wheels measuring 18 by 7.5 inches in front and wider 18 by 8 inches in the rear. It also features higher performing Michelin Pilot Super Sport Summer tires, two 2540s in front and two 4535s in the rear. The M Performance braking system also has larger 13.4 inch ventilated disc brakes up front with four piston fixed calipers contrasting in blue with the M logo. The rear 11.4 inch discs are also internally ventilated and feature two piston calipers. Braking distances from 60 miles an hour are very impressive 103 feet. Through BMW Efficient Dynamics, brake energy regeneration is also used to help power various vehicle electronics. As far as the suspension, the M235 utilizes a lot of aluminum components including forged aluminum lower arms in the front, the subframe, steering rack, and even brake components. It features independent McPherson struts in front with dual lower ball joints and coil springs. The rear features an independent 5-link setup also with coil springs. Like I said, the vehicle also has adaptive dampers, further facilitated by front and rear anti-roll bars. Overall length is 174.5 inches with a width of 69.8 inches and a height of 55.8 inches. Total curb weight for the automatic transmission is around 3,400 pounds, while the manual weighs slightly less. The 2 Series also implements a new style hood release. You know, typically when you pull the interior lever to release the bonnet, you have to look for a little lever underneath the bonnet before you can open it fully. This one, you just pull the lever twice, and then it automatically releases the hood, so all you have to do when you walk up to the front is open it. There's no actual catch underneath that you have to fish for. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the other latch release as I pull it for the second time. The standard 228 features BMW's newest generation turbo 2 liter 4 cylinder, but stepping on up to the M235, you get BMW's legendary all aluminum 3 liter inline 6 cylinder with double overhead camshafts, direct injection, variable valve timing, and 4 valves per cylinder. Paired with a twin scroll turbocharger and intercooler, it provides a healthy 320 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 330 pound feet of torque as low as 1,300 RPM. All of that power is sent through the rear wheels, and a mechanical limited slip rear differential is also available, while the standard sport exhaust really lets the unique sound of that straight six sing. With these numbers, the M235 achieves a manufacturer claimed 0 to 60 time of 4.8 seconds, with quarter mile times of 13 seconds at 106.6 miles an hour. Top speed is limited to 130 miles an hour. Compared to the manual transmission, 0 to 60 times are 0.1 second quicker for the automatic. Fuel economy is also slightly better for the auto. With a 13.7 gallon tank running on required premium fuel, expect to see between 22 city and 32 on the highway for the automatic transmission and between 19 city 28 highway for the manual gearbox. My favorite thing about the 2 Series is how it tries to bring back the basics of BMW driving enjoyment. Of course, build quality is quite excellent for a vehicle in this class, but styling isn't overly done. It's nice and handsome, modern and functional, and can be specced with different colors, trim pieces, and technology goodies to truly make it your own. For the most part throughout, the panels and touch points do feature soft touch material, especially across the middle of the doors where you have stitched accenting. Your power windows and power mirrors are located on the door with power folding mirrors while your power locks are located on the dash as in typical BMW fashion. Aluminum and silver trim is found throughout this particular model with a good amount of storage located down below. Now, as far as the seating, the standard 228 features manually adjusting sport bucket seats, but this particular M model has M-specific sport leather bucket seats finished in the black Dakota leather like I mentioned earlier. All of your power adjustments are located down below including two-person memory, four-way power lumbar, and upper back support. There's also a manual thigh extension for those taller-legged individuals. Continuing across the back, you'll see the nice attention to detail with fantastic amounts of side bolstering for a great amount of lateral grip. Towards the top, you'll also notice the headrests are adjustable up and down and the seat belts are also adjustable. Continuing on down below, you have aluminum M door sill plaques as well as an aluminum kick plate with the M logo. A little bit of storage in the lower portion of the dash with standard driver and passenger side knee airbags. The steering wheel itself is manual tilting telescoping. 
Across the dash, you'll find subtle touches of bright work and satin chrome with some high gloss black veneers. All nicely finished off with a black headliner and optional sunroof. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. and shut her up. Good solid panels as you'd expect. The standard audio system for the 2 Series is a premium 10 speaker setup, but for that extra special touch, an optional 360 watt 12 speaker Harman Kardon surround sound system is also available. All cars also receive BMW's iDrive infotainment system as standard with a 6.5 inch LCD screen. You also have standard satellite radio, HD radio, and iPod auxiliary USB integration. Opting for the technology group adds navigation and a larger high-res 8.8-inch screen. In addition to a revised iDrive controller that accepts touch commands like freehand text with navigation. You also gain Bluetooth audio and more smartphone integration with BMW apps and remote services. B. Now while the Harman Kardon audio system will definitely give you that extra audio punch, the standard system for the 2 Series is more than adequate for the everyday listener with a nice balance between bass and treble. pillars, housing your side curtain airbags, microphone for your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, as well as illuminated vanity mirrors. Our dimming UV mirror as standard, also with a compass. And in your top stack, your SOS emergency roadside assistance, as well as all LED interior illumination, including reading lamps, with LED ambient lighting. Your sunroof is fully automatic and activated via that switch in the middle. So like I mentioned, the entire iDrive system is controlled via this remote controller located in the center console and surrounded by aluminum for the 2 Series. If you're familiar with any of BMW's previous iDrive systems of the past few years, you'll catch on to this pretty quick. The rotary dial in the middle here will click up, down, left and right, push down when you find a selection, accent and bright work, with all the main functions and controls easily accessible in shortcut buttons. Now if we take a closer look, we're going to hit CD Multimedia, which we're currently in at the moment, and it'll allow you to go between your different media options, including your CD player, iPod, auxiliary integration, as well as USB input. If you click the wheel to the left and right, it goes between the different submenus, where you can also adjust your tone and equalizer settings. Clicking the wheel all the way over to the right will also bring us some different options. The back button on the control pad also allows you to go back between your selections. Click the wheel all the way over to the left enough times so it'll bring it back to the main menu, otherwise you can just hit the menu shortcut key. Going down to radio, shows up your different area stations, as well as manual tuning, and you can select between the different radio options, FM, AM, satellite radio, your preset stations, as well as adjusting your audio settings. Continuing down through the system, it's your standard hands-free Bluetooth telephone, it'll automatically ask you to pair it, but otherwise, 
This is the main phone screen where you can store numbers, redial, dial numbers manually through the system as well as send messages. And this screen is where you would store your contacts. BMW Connected Drive is basically a concierge service where you can actually um, get restaurant, hotel recommendations, things of that nature, access online, your roadside assistance, as well as customer relations. Vehicle information. Your owner's manual is stored on the system and you can search it manually or via another couple different ways. Quick reference as well as searching by pictures. Trip computer, fuel data, as well as various vehicle diagnostics and system settings. Very efficient dynamic system as I talked about earlier. And if you haven't noticed already, once you've actually selected a particular screen and click the wheel to the left and go back to the main one, if you click it to the right once more, it'll bring you back to that same screen, so you don't always have to fish back through the menu if you move over the selection. Twist the wheel all the way to the bottom for the vehicle settings, and these are all of the personalizable options of the vehicle, so it's totally customizable to the different drivers. It goes quite in depth. So, in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the iDrive system in the new N235, at least the one that does not come equipped with navigation. As we continue down the center console, it's a nice, clean, simple design with your lock and unlock located right beneath your hazard switch, your in dash CD player, as well as your preset stations, and manually changing some of the radio settings like your different um, modes for the audio system, as well as AM, FM. Seek, Tune is located off to the far right. Continuing on down is a standard dual zone electronic automatic climate control with three stage heated seats for both the driver and passenger. One touch automatic on this side here, front and rear defrost, changing the different zones independent for both sides, making it a little bit more customizable. The center console features a bit of storage up front here, as well as two removable trays if you wanted a little bit extra storage, bladder and power outlet, little tray here as well as a spot to put a phone or something of that nature or at least the key fob and then you can pull them out and it reveals the deep bolt cup holders nice and convenient now since the 2 series is a lower priced alternative in the model lineup kind of like the new mercedes cla class the center console is composed primarily of plastic but there is a soft touch point up here so you can rest your legs comfortably your traction settings as well as the vehicle dynamics controller like I talked about earlier, the main iDrive controller, as well as a leather padded center console. With a good amount of storage, it locks in place and also houses your iPod, auxiliary, and USB inputs. The armrest is also adjustable. Just grab it and slide it forward. As far as the steering wheel, your cruise control is off to the left hand side here. Radio controls, hands-free telephone, and voice dialing off to the far right. Intermittent wipers in the stock back there. And on the left-hand side are your parking lamps, high beams, turn signals, pretty much standard what you would find in that stock, but your driver information controller is located on that button in the edge. The driver info system shows in that little digital display right beneath the speedometer cluster. So your date, trip computer, time, fuel data, and more. I also love the very simple sporty gauge cluster, accented in red with polished rings around and white numbers, typical BMW. Alrighty. We're gonna shut her down. And we're gonna check out the back seat. Now gaining access to the back seat really is quite simple. There's a power actuated mechanism via those two little buttons right there. First, just pull the seat back, it'll automatically lock, and you can choose to either hold it down and then you can control it manually, or tap it once, it'll automatically pull the seat forward itself. There are storage pockets on the back of the seats.
Now climbing into the back of the 2 Series may be a little bit tighter for taller individuals. It's not too bad for someone of my height. I'm around 5'11 or so, but headroom is a little bit tighter like I mentioned. Right now my head is just barely touching the ceiling back here, so if you're going to haul anybody in the back of a 2 Series, it's better just to have someone a little bit probably under 5'10 or so. In the middle here you do have some storage compartments, your air vents as well as a power outlet, as well as some nice padded leather armrests across the side, so it's not an uncomfortable place to sit at all, just more comfortable for shorter individuals. You do have some coat hooks as well as side curtain airbags for the rear passengers, but what's also nice, if you look at the headrest right here, it's tilted down, obviously that's not going to provide a lot of protection for your head. They're actually down for visibility purposes. If you want to pull them up, just grab them and pull them forward. Same thing with the other side. If you want to put them back down, there's a button located on the right hand side of each headrest. Just push it and they go down. Pretty simple. Open up the trunk of the 2 Series and you'll find a respectable 13.8 cubic feet of cargo space. The dimensions were used quite efficiently with extensions across each side for stowage of longer items or tucking away smaller ones. You do have cargo tie downs on each side, but the left hand side features a 12 volt power outlet while the right hand side features a little storage net. For stowage of really large items, you can actually collapse the rear seats, a 60-40 split, which allows you to have a flat loading space all the way up to the front. And for better packaging, the battery of the vehicle is actually located in the rear, conveniently underneath the trunk floor. The passenger seat also features similar adjustment that you would find on the driver's seat. And you do have a lockable glove box with modest storage. Unlike the limited production 1 Series M Coupe, the M235 represents a more mainstream model for the avid BMW enthusiast. Combining M inspired performance within a tightly packed, sleek coupe with a turbo straight 6, two transmission options, and wide feature customizability to truly make it your own. A back to basics BMW built for pure driving enjoyment. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all new 2014 BMW M235i. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.